Good morning. It's Sunday morning, y'all. Hey, man, somebody. And welcome to the Boulevard Church of Christ. Sunday morning worship, live and in color. Amen. What a wonderful God we serve because He has blessed us not only to be able to wake up, but to get up and to get out here to the house of God one more time. Amen. We are so thankful and grateful for all of His continued blessings. Uh, in all of our lives, and uh, it did not have to be so, but because we serve a loving and powerful God, we are able to experience uh, His presence yet, yet again uh, in worship and praise to Him. So good to see each of you this morning. We are thankful that you are here. Uh, as always, we are grateful for this privilege that we have to fellowship together. And because we have this opportunity to fellowship love, uh, ought to just be losing from one to the other. Amen, somebody. Because we serve a loving God, and God wants us to love each other just like he loves us. Amen. Because somewhere I read, how can we say that we love God whom we have never seen? Ain't I pray that we see every day, amen, somebody. So say this with we love, because God first loved us. Point at all your neighbors around you and say, I love you. Hey, nothing you can do about it. So we don't even think about trying. Amen, somebody. Amen. Because of God's love, we have this great privilege as a people of God to be able we ask that you please, uh, first of all, pray along with us as we pray. And if you will, please uh, take down all of these prayer requests in your prayer journals. And in your personal devotional time, talk to God in prayer on behalf of these who have made their requests known. And we will continue to be in prayer until God answers. Sister Mary Campbell is requesting prayer for her cousins, uh, David Campbell and Michael Campbell, who are experiencing health concerns. She's also asking for prayer uh, as she visits uh, the doctor on tomorrow, uh, that she will receive a favorable report uh, regarding issues with her kidneys. So let's be in prayer uh, for Sister Mary Campbell. And for cousins. <clears throat> Be in prayer for Sister Lydia Perry. Uh, her father passed away on last week, so let's be in prayer uh, for Sister Lydia Perry during, during the passing of her father. Be in prayer for Brother Steve Stokes and the Carter family. Uh, his brother, Percy Carter, passed away last week in Illinois. I believe they are there this weekend uh, for uh, the services. So let's keep Brother Stokes uh, and the Carter family in our prayers. Also be in prayer for the Garrison and Tutwiler family during the loss of Mr. Roy Tutwiler. This is the son of Sister Lydia Garrison and the brother of Sister Deborah Tuller. So let's keep them in our prayers. Uh, we'll share information uh, during the announcements today regarding the arrangements. Uh, but let's uh, keep Sister Garrison, uh, Sister Deborah, and uh, the Garrison and Tuttlewiler family in our prayers. Uh, be in prayer for brother and sister Paul and Beta King for Traveling Grace. Uh, they will be out of the country for two weeks. So let's uh, keep them in prayer that they will be uh, safe traveling. They will be safe in their destination. That they will return safe. I get a point in time planning all the way home. My wife and I grew up, we're going to try to be like Brother Paul and 
So, Father, we come on behalf of Sister Mary Campbell, uh, who has requested prayer for her cousins, uh, David Campbell and Michael Campbell, regarding health concerns. Father, you know what they need. You know what their concerns are. And so we ask that you please bless right where they need to be blessed and restore to health because you're holding the divine will. Father, we pray for Sister Campbell and for her health concerns. And, uh, we pray for her as she prepares to visit the doctor on tomorrow. And, uh, particularly regarding the concerns with her kidneys and our prayers and that uh, she will receive a favorable report uh, as she visits and Father we pray that they will uh, determine the cause and uh, prescribe the right things uh, that our health will be restored. Father we pray for uh, Sister Lydia Perry uh, whose father passed away on last week and we ask that you bless with comfort and grace Give this family strength. Lift them up with your mighty arm. Help them, Father, to continue to look to you uh, for guidance and strength. We pray the same for Brother Steve Stokes uh, and the Carter family during the loss of his brother, Mr. Percy Carter. Comfort them. Hold them up with your mighty arm. Help them to know that you're able see them through this season. Father, we pray for Brother and Sister Stokes as they are traveling. Uh, keep them safe in their destination and bless them as they uh, prepare to return home. Uh, to travel safely, be with those traveling around them, that they will be safe. And Father, I pray is that they will return home safe at the appointed time and find all well. They return. Father, we pray for the garrison and Tuttlewild family during the loss of Mr. Roy Tuttlewilder, uh, the son of Sister Lily Garrison, and the brother of Sister Deborah Togo. Father, please comfort this family. We ask especially that you be with Sister Garrison. Uh, Father, It's, it's difficult when a parent loses a child. And Father, we just ask for a double portion of strength for Sister Garrison and comfort her. And help her, Father, to know that you're able to see her and this family through. And bless us as her church family, the extended family, to be a source of comfort and strength for her and for our children at this time. As they go through this season of grief. So, Father, we ask your continued blessings for uh, many among our number who are uh, sick and infirm and uh, who are dealing with health challenges. We ask your continued blessings for Brother Carl Williams as he recovers from health concerns. Please, Father, continue to lift him up and restore his health to a reasonable portion of his your holy and divine will. We just ask that you continue to guide those who give care to him, uh, that uh, they will do the right thing the right way at the right time, and his health will be restored. Father, we pray for Sister Barnett, and we thank you for blessing her. For allowing all to go to continue to go well with her, we just ask your continued blessings for her for strength, and uh, not only her but all of our mature members, especially. We ask uh, your your grace and your blessings for them. We thank you for them and for uh, the many years that you have given them and for what they mean to us and to this body of believers. We just ask that you continue to bless them and bless us as their extended family to continue to be a source of comfort and strength for them. For many who are traveling uh, this week and the coming week, uh, we ask your blessings for Brother and Sister Paul and Aveda King who are out of the country. Please 
Please, Father, bless them in a special way. Protect them and keep them safe and keep them safe in their destination and bring them back home safely at their appointed time. And bless them to find all we are for. Sister McKinney, Sister Karen Hall, Sister Linda Scott, uh, and many others uh, who are traveling. Please, Father, protect them and guide them uh, in their locations, all those who are traveling around them, uh, the Bacchus family. Uh, protect them and keep them safe. And then bless all of them to be able to return home uh, safely. Father, we ask you especially that you continue to uh, please protect uh, the citizens of Ukraine as they continue to have to endure war. And Father, please move on the hearts of the leaders of Russia that they will refrain from causing uh, this harm and from taking the lives innocent men, women, and children. Uh, Father, we pray that you will uh, help them to have a heart of reconciliation. Uh, guide the leaders in other countries, particularly the leaders of the U.S. that they will make the right decisions at the right time. And do the right thing the right way that uh, peace will prevail. Father, we thank you for this blessed privilege that we have to assemble together yet again this morning to worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, we ask that you will please guide us and help us to remove any distractions that might hinder us from worshiping you in a manner that pleases you and not ourselves. Father, I pray is that uh, we will be edified, the devil will be horrified, but most of all, your mighty name will be glorified. It is in the name of the life giver, King Jesus, who died on Calvary for the sins of the world and yet ever lives forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks to all. Together, Amen. Good morning, good morning. Let's check out the devices this morning so we won't have no interruption during our worship service this morning. Check out all our devices. Come, we that love the Lord and let our joy be known. I 
wonderful blessing is that you have so richly showered upon us. Lord, we come and we, we magnify your holy name. We exalt you and we lift you up. Lord, we just thank you so much for being our God and for being our Father. Lord, we thank you for this avenue of prayer. Lord, we come with bow down heads and humble hearts, looking to you for answers to all of life's troubles and issues. We know that you hear and answer prayer. Lord, we come praying for uh, those that uh, the exhaustive prayer list that has been read in our hearing, Lord, we we don't know all of their conditions, but you know their names, you know their addresses, you know the number of hairs on their heads. Lord, we just pray now that you would meet them at their point of need and bless them with whatever blessings that they stand in need of. Lord, we pray that you would bless the sick and the firm. Bless those that uh, are traveling. Give them traveling graces that they would be able to return home to their loved ones safely. Lord, we ask that you would bless us now in this worship experience, that you would remove any and everything from our minds and our hearts that would hinder us from being able to give you the worship that you deserve, to be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we pray your blessings upon the leadership of this flock. Uh, bless the minister who will stand and declare your divine words. Lord, we pray that you would give him power and give him strength uh, to be able to preach your word with power and clarity. Lord, that somebody uh, needs to hear that there is a God and that uh, the power of saving and healing is available to all. Amen. Lord, we, we pray now that you would be with us throughout uh, the rest of this coming week, Lord. We, uh, we, well, they say that we're in an endemic world, but we know that you are God of all endemics. And we're looking and we're leaning and depending upon you. Uh, we pray that you would just give us the, the strength and give us the courage to walk victoriously in your love. We will always be mindful to give you all the praise, to give you all the glory. And we pray that you would forgive us now of all of our sins. Save us in the end is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. We give thanks always. Amen.
like this, rejoice always. And again, I say, rejoice. I don't care what's going on around us, what we face in our everyday lives as we sojourn in this life. If God is on our side, we can still rejoice. Because God is good and not just some of that. God is mighty good. Amen, somebody. God is mighty good. All the time. We just ought to be thankful. Every moment that we have uh, on this time side that God has called us to be his own. So we are thankful uh, to him uh, for all of his goodness and grace. As always, it's good to see all of you. We're thankful for your presence. Uh, and it's always good to be with the people of God in the house of God as we attempt to try to do the will of God in this place. Uh, to our guests and friends, uh, we are honored uh, by your presence and we'll recognize you in a personal way for the end of this service. Want you to know that we are happy that you're here uh, on this morning on the boulevard. Amen, somebody. To all of our brothers who have led us thus far in our worship, we thank you for a job we are done, uh, even in the midst of dealing with uh, inoperable equipment. Uh, amen, somebody. Uh, we, we're going to get that right. So be patient with us and, and uh, pray for us. Uh, but uh, we thank all these men who, uh, in spite of those challenges, in spite of those challenges, brother, fervent prayer by Brother Murdoch. Uh, good job of scripture reading by Brother Brandon and the singing of those songs of Zion by Brother Darwin Moore. <clears throat> Uh, we're going to take uh, a little bit of a break from our thematic book for this year, the book of John. Uh, for the next couple of weeks or so, we'll find our way uh, back to John. <clears throat> but uh, today, I want to look at a couple of thoughts from John, chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. We'll take a few thoughts and we'll, we'll try to let you know. Now, the word of the Lord came unto John, the son of Mitai, saying, Arise, go to the great city and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. John rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare there, thereof and went down into the ship to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence. Of the Lord. But the Lord has set out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid, and cried every man unto his God, and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it uh, of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay in his fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him, made an inquiry. What meanest thou, O sleep? Arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us that we. Here is not. And they said everyone to his fellow, 
Come and let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon John. Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? Start asking him, where is thine occupation? Where you come from? What is thy country? Who, who your people? <laughs> we need to know something about you. And he said unto them, I am the Hebrew. And I fear the Lord, the God heaven which had made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid and said, and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wrought and was tempestuous. And he said unto them, Take me up, cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. But verse 12 again for, for emphasis sake this morning. And he said unto them, Take me up, cast me forth into the sea, so that the sea will be calm for you. <clears throat> for I know that for my sake, this tempest. Is about for a few minutes. Sometimes to see the Savior, we have to spend time in the storm. Sometimes to see the Savior, we got to go through some stuff. Sometimes to see the Savior, we have to spend time. In the storm. Last week, the Memphis of Mid South area was hit by a storm. An EF1 tornado touched down in Panola County and the surrounding areas, it caused damage to homes, vehicles, businesses, and even places. Of worship. I spent the better part of yesterday uh, having to put a portion of fencing back up uh, in our backyard. That's why I'm, I'm, uh, I'm dragging this moment. <laughs> there were sirens sounding all over the area that gave warning that a storm was near and you need to take cover. And if you ignore the warning, you run the risk uh, of encountering harm or even more tragic. You run the risk of you losing your life. But what is even more tragic is that when the people of God who he has called to be his own, who he has given the charge of carrying the gospel, encounter people every day who are drowning in sin, who are drowning in their hurts, longing to find some manner of consolation. They are engulfed in the storm of life and have no refuge. But just like Jonah, when God says, go, we run in the other direction. We, we try to hide from our responsibility. And if we are not careful, 
We can go so far in the wrong direction and become so blinded by our own self-will. We find ourselves caught up in the tempestuous winds of life to the degree that if we want to see the Savior, we're going to have to find ourselves spending some time in something. There, there, there are three things that, that Jonah shows us in this text to help us to avoid the stuff that he went through if, if we listen. And so he shows us, first of all, the rebellion of Jonah. And we'll see this in verses 1 through 17. Then he, he shows us the repentance from Job. We'll see this in chapter 2, verses 1 through 9. And then, as we try to close, there's the redemption for Job. Uh, as we look uh, in chapter 2, verses 10 through uh, chapter 3, the verses of 1 through 4, as we try to labor from this thought this morning, the in order to see the Savior, we have to spend time in a storm. Jonah begins this thought in verse 1 of chapter 1. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai. Saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. Nineveh was the capital city of a city. The Bible calls it a great city, but it was a city that had become so wicked that the Lord said, There wickedness is come up before me. And sometimes I, I wonder if when God looks at this society does he see similar wickedness to that of men. The Bible does not specify what their sins were but as a result of their sin, God uh, has to now engage in public punishment. He calls the prophet Jonah to go to them and cry against it, but Jonah, the Bible says in verse 3, rose up and fled to Tosh. From the presence of the Lord. Church, you need to understand when God gives us a command, you can try to run from it, but you can't hide from God. Psalms 139, the verses of 7 through 11. Where shall I go from thy spirit? Whither shall I free, flee, brother, from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in heaven, behold, thou art there. If I take uh, the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand Lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me. Even the night shall be light about me. You can't hide from God. So you may well Go on and do what he tells you to do. Like many of us, Jonah had the wrong attitude toward God because he felt that perhaps what God was asking him to do was impossible. How do you expect me 
uh, to go preach to a city and you expect me to turn uh, a whole city around and if God tells us to do it, we have to trust that God will supply us to be able to do it. What Jonah failed to do is what we failed to do is understand that obeying the will of God is for, first of all, our enlightenment. John chapter 7, the verses of 16 and 17, Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. When God calls us to do his will, it is first for our enlightenment, but then it is for our enablement. Hebrews chapter uh, 13, the verses uh, 20 and 21. Now the God of peace <clears throat> that brought again uh, from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you, watch the Bible, uh, that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom we glory forever and ever. Amen. Not only does God help us to understand what his will is, but he also gives us the ability to perform it. John, or rather Jonah, thought his circumstances were working for him, uh, but they were actually working against him. Uh, he goes down to Joppa and finds a ship to Tarshish. Verses 3 and 4, the Bible says that Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. And he found the ship going to Tarshish. So he he paid the fare thereof. Church, let me inject something right here. It don't ever pay to try to get away from God. See, he paid the path to get on the boat. But Jack, I don't care how much you pay uh, in the world to try to get away from it, don't ever pay to try to run from God. He went down into, into the ship to go with them under Tasha's from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord, see, that's why, that's why, uh, I said to you, don't have to pay. Verse 4 says, even though Jonah thought he could get on this ship and get away from the Lord, the Bible says in verse 4, but the Lord, <clears throat> excuse me, sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was light. To be broke. You can get in the boat if you want to. God said, I can get you in the boat out in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> he paid his faith. Went down into the boat. Here's, here's what we miss in this text. When you start a downward spiral away from the Lord, it ain't gonna get no better. Bible says he went down to Joppa. He went down into the ship. He uh, he thinking, cool, I got here just in time to catch the boat. But the Bible says in verse 4, God sent a great wind into the sea. 
And even if you think you're getting away, you can't run from God. And from verses 5 through 8, the mariners were in a frenzy. The Bible says in verse 5, then the mariners were afraid and cried every man into his God and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What mean it? Now what do you mean? There's a storm up above and you down here sleep. Call on your God. If so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. And they said they were going to his fellow, come and let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots. And the lot fell upon Jonah. Jonah is asleep. They wake him up. And they tell him to call on his God. And even though they, many of them, worship idols, they call on their own God and they say it to Jonah. Because now you have to understand, they knew that Jonah was a man of God because he told them that he was down there essentially trying to get away from God. So they knew that he was a man of God. So they said, call on your God. We're going to call him like somebody needs to help us. And so they cast lots. Casting lots was an ancient custom used to find out the mind of the divine providence. You will remember in Acts chapter 1, uh, around verse 24 and 25, after uh, Judas uh, uh, paid, was paid 30 pieces of silver uh, to hand over Jesus caused him to go to Calvary's cross, he went out and painted himself. And uh, he had to be replaced by one named Matthew. The Bible says when the apostles came together in Acts chapter 1, around verses 24 and 25, they cast lots. And the lots fell on Matthias or Matthew who uh, became uh, the other apostle. So the, the, the process of casting lots was, was done in ancient times uh, to uh, understand the mind of divine providence. And so now they're casting lots on John. And the lots, or rather they cast the lots, and the lots uh, fell on Jonah. So now, now they're trying to figure out who this guy is. Okay, we cast lots, and the lots fell on you. Okay, we need to know something about you. Who are you? Where did you come? What's your occupation?
sent a storm to Jonah because Jonah was running from the Lord. See, sometimes if, if we find ourselves running, sometimes we inadvertently cause problems to other folks. We get other folks caught up in a storm because the storm was meant for us from God. Sometimes we can't see the same until we spend some time in a storm. They end up throwing Jonah overboard. The Bible says that God prepared a great fish. We commonly refer to this as a whale. The Bible doesn't call it a whale, uh, but we always tell the story as Jonah and the whale. The Bible calls it a great fish. Uh, that God prepared and, and swallowed him for three days and three nights he was in the fish's belly. He, he was a type of, of Christ that symbolized the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 12, the verses for him. When we sin and disobey the will of God, uh, God never allows our sin to be successful. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, the verse of 6, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he received. And sometimes, in order to see the Savior's face, we have to spend some time in the storm. Well, as we move forward, after we see uh, the rebellion of John, we now see the repentance from John. Chapter 2, beginning in verse 1, the Bible says, Then John prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. Said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly of hell cry, and thou heardest my voice, for thou hadst cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas and the floods, and passed me about all thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then, then, said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again toward the holy temple. Church, you really don't know how to pray. <laughs> Until you've been to a stone. <laughs> See, when, when you get caught up in the storm of life, you think you know how to pray. You get away from praying them little pretty prayers. <laughs> Our Father in heaven. <laughs> oh Lord. You get away from praying them little pretty prayers. When you get caught up in a storm, Jesus, I need some help out here. <laughs> And so Jonah 
accepted God's discipline. Then he trusted God's promises in verses 4 through 7. He says, Then I see. I will look again. See, when, when you run away from God, doing things your way, and then you start going through stuff, you end a storm, then you remember who it is you need to be seeing. And then he said, I said, oh, now I remember. I look again toward thy holy temple. In confidence of faith, he anticipates seeing the temple at Jerusalem. Then he yielded to God's will in verses 8 through 9. They they observe lying vanities, forsake their mercy, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. Jonah says this, I know that I have allowed idols in my life to, to rob me of your blessings. And, and uh, idols can be anything that we put before God. Idols can be your car, it can be the gym, it can be your job, it can be your family, it can be your husband, it can be your wife, it can be your anything that we put before God becomes our life. Jonah, Jonah says, I know I, I allow idols in my life to rob me of your blessings, but I will make a sincere vow that as soon as my circumstances will permit me, as soon as I can get out of this pit, I will faithfully execute what I have to when, when disobedience causes us to go through a storm and you you get through the storm, your attitude changes. You, you, you don't see stuff the same way. So you, you, you start seeing things differently after the storm than you did uh, before you went in the storm. Psalms chapter 66, the verses are 13 through 16. I will go into thy house with burnt offerings. I will pay thee my vows with my lips have uttered and my mouth had spoken when, watch the Bible, when I was in trouble, I would offer unto the burnt sacrifices of, of, of fatlings with the incense of rams, I would offer bullets with goats. So I uh, come in here, all ye that fear God, and I will declare what he had done for my soul. Let me tell you what God did for me. When I was in trouble, I made a vow and I decided that I'm going to keep it. And let me tell you, if you decide and you find yourself in trouble, let me tell you what God did for me. He'll do the same thing for you is what the psalmist says in this text. After Jonah's revenge, you now see Jonah's repentance and and John is saying to God that if you if you give me another chance, I'm on my way to nothing. But church, we're a whole lot better off if we seek God first instead of God having to force us to see His Son. Sometimes, in order to seek Satan, we got to spend time in the storm. Well, as we close, we now see the redemption for John. The Bible says in chapter 2, the verses 10 through chapter 3, verse 4, and the Lord spake unto the fish and it vomited out John upon the dry land. The word of the Lord, chapter 3, verse 1, came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go into Nineveh, that great city, and 
preach unto it the preaching that I did. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding, watch the Bible, was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city. <laughs> in a day. See, stuff uh, that you put off, uh, stuff that uh, you procrastinate doing, that you don't consider important, that you don't think uh, is a priority, uh, you'll find out that you'll find yourself doing stuff with the quickness. When God puts a fire behind you, three days journey, Jonah's like, oh, I believe I can do that more. <laughs> because after you've been in a storm, you see stuff a whole lot different than you did before you went in. Now, I, I'm not going to take no three days because. Uh, that's a little bit more time than I need. <laughs> Jonah began to enter the city a day's journey and he cried and said, yet 40 days and never shall be overcome. Not only did he get there in a day's time, when he got to Nineveh, he went in the city preaching. He didn't wait until he got there. On his way in, the Bible says he went into Nineveh crying concerning the word of God. See, church, when you've been in the storm, you can't keep quiet when God gives you something to do. You're going to cry out, letting the world know. I'm bringing the word of God. After God puts you in a position of being humble, you will hear what he has to say. After Jonah stubbornly refused to hear God's voice, the first time God speaks to him the second time, we ought to be glad that God is a God of seven tenths. When we refuse to fulfill our obligations to God, He still gives us a chance after chance after chance after chance after chance. We ought to be glad that we serve a God of seven chance. Abraham fled to Egypt where he lied about his wife, Sarah. Gave, but God gave them another chance. In Genesis chapter 12, the verses are 10 through chapter 13, verse 4. Jacob lied to his father Isaac, but God restored him and used him to build the great nation of Israel. Moses killed a man, believed to be in self defense, and fled from Egypt, but God called him and sent him right back to Egypt to be the leader of his people. Peter denied the Lord three times, but Jesus forgave him and said, come on and follow me. God is a God of circumstances, but as encouraging as these examples might be, we must not use these as excuses to fall short of doing God's will. Ultimately, never believe God because of Jonah's preaching and turn from their evil. But had it not been for a storm in Jonah's life, it's possible that the city would have ended up in ruin. Sometimes it takes a stone for us to see the 
to stay in this place. But church, what I'm trying to get you to understand this morning is let's not force God to have to send us through a storm to save the world with the gospel of Christ. There are souls that are hurting that might not have time to wait for us to come out of school. And so, that's what I came to say to this great people this morning. Before we have to encounter a storm like Jonah, the cause of our, of our disobedience in knowing God's will, let's be fully persuaded to have both be planted firmly on the rock which is Christ. Let's be fully persuaded to have both hands holding on to God's hands. Let's be fully persuaded to have both eyes looking unto Jesus. Let's be fully persuaded to have both ears turned or rather tuned in to heaven. Uh, let's be fully persuaded have both legs standing firm in eternal truth. Let's be fully persuaded to have both arms full of the goodness of God. Let's be fully persuaded to have both our actions and our attitudes magnified and glorified of God. And the unfortunate reality is that if we are going to reach that point in our spiritual maturity, unfortunately, for many of us, sometimes before we can see the Savior, if we don't change our attitude, we're going to have to find ourselves in the midst of a storm. Church, God has called all of us out of darkness to do his will. He has called us to be his own. He has called us to carry the word. And one of the reasons why I wanted to bring this message on this morning is we we just started a new study in Bible study, a new lesson regarding evangelism. And if you haven't been attending Bible study, let me encourage you. Start attending Bible study each Wednesday evening, dear Zoom. Because God uh, is showing us through His Word that we have work to do. There are souls in this community. There are souls in this city. And, 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 I, and perhaps somebody might like, well, preacher, why are you talking about evangelism in the midst of a pandemic? We can't get out among folk. Uh, and, and care the gospel, we in a pandemic. If folks don't need to hear about God now, we ain't going to ever be a good time. If ever there was a time when the world needed the Lord in the right time, and it's our job to care the gospel. And don't wait until God has to send us through some stuff before we decide to get up and start doing something. The world is hurting. People are at war. Folk are uh, depressed. Folks are dealing with uh, COVID, losing loved ones from COVID. Coming through COVID, having after effects from COVID, losing their job, all manner of issues folk are dealing with. We can't use that as an excuse not to teach the gospel. And if now is not a thing, if now is not a good time, when will it ever be a good time?
in the contact with every day. Who don't know about Jesus. And yet, we are the call. He has called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. And we won't say anything to anybody else who is in darkness as, darkness as to how they can come out of darkness. Don't, don't, don't force God to send us through this thing. Let's, let's do, let's, let's do the first works. Let's do what God has, has called us to do. I understand that uh, all of us are not comfortable with saying uh, something about the Bible, about the church, and about the Lord. That's why we're going through this lesson on evangelism to help you to get equipped. So that, so that you won't shy away from what God has called us to do. Regardless of whatever else we do in the church, we can have all kinds of ministries, uh, we can have all kinds of programs, uh, we can do things in the community, we can have all kinds of ministries uh, for, for the people of God inside these walls. All of that's good. But our sole purpose as Christians is to carry the gospel. And God, no way in the scripture ever said that that needs to cease in the event of a pandemic. You ain't gonna find it no way in God. And so let's, let's afford going through an unnecessary storm. Let's learn from Jonah's mistakes what we ought to do as people of God. I'm talking to somebody this morning. Be right there. Get running from responsibility. Maybe not necessarily uh, running from it, but just not getting up doing anything about it. We're not fulfilling our mission. We, we, we're, not, we're not sharing the word. We're not telling anybody about the gospel. Come on today. I just want to pray for the righteous. Help you right there. Help you to tune in and focus on what God has called us to do relative to evangelism, relative to carrying the word, carrying the gospel. To the lost, the dying, and the perishing world. The world, I've said this before, and I'm going to keep saying it. The world at its worst needs the church to be at its best. And that starts with me, that starts with you. Come on, this morning. Ask for the prayer for the righteous to help you right there. I'm talking to somebody this morning, you not saying yes to the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. You not uh, heard about it. That good news of uh, how Jesus died for your sins and for mine, how he was buried in a borrowed tomb. Uh, he died, buried in a borrowed tomb, and early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands, and now he sits at the right hand of the Father, pleading for you and for me. You've you not heard about the good news of of how Jesus gave his life uh, to call us his own. God wants you to be saved. You do that this morning by hearing the gospel. According to Romans 10, 17, believing that same gospel. According to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Repent it. Turn it from your way. Turn it from uh, the ways of the word. Turn it from procrastination. Turn away from making other things a priority and not putting God first. Time is not guaranteed. Tomorrow, the rest of this day is not guaranteed. While the blood runs warm in your veins, if you need to say yes to Jesus, you ought to do it now. Confess Christ. Sweetest name on mortal tongue. I believe in Jesus Christ is the Son of God. As that eunuch did in Acts chapter 8. Verses of 35 point. Follow. 
be buried in the water of grave back to the order of mission of your sins. Acts chapter 2, 38. Then get up out of the water, a brand new creation, a brand new creature. Be faithful unto death. Serve God. Tell somebody else about how good God has been to you. Tell somebody else about when you were in trouble, you found Jesus. And you would, you want to share that good news with them. Start working out your soul salvation. Be faithful unto death, and God will give you a crown. It won't fail. Somebody needs to see yesterday. If you need special prayer, you may remain standing. Uh, if uh, you need additional prayer. You need to make your prayer request known. You can come down one of these aisles. Uh, make that known to, to the brothers who will receive. If you need to say yes to baptism, you are gone. Why don't you do it just now? That's what we got to say. Let's say Thank you. Say yes, to the Lord. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Well, we thank say yes. Thank you. Of what type of storm we're in the midst of, 
that you can continue, you will continue to bless us. As long as we do your will, your way. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you bless us all in terms of how we may stand in need of. There are those who are standing here literally on this morning, Heavenly Father, standing in the need of prayer. We pray, Heavenly Father, that whatever their situation is, whatever their problem may be, that you will reach out and touch and provide comfort in whatever they stand in need of. We pray, Heavenly Father, at this time for those that are bereaved, we ask that you continue to bless them and strengthen them. The, the Perry family, the Stokes family, the Darius and Tutwiler family, we ask you to bless them at this time of bereavement. We pray, Heavenly Father, for uh, the sister uh, Harris and his acts for strength. We ask that you continue to bless her in all the things that she that she stands in need of. Help her, Heavenly Father, in the midst of the storms that she be, may be going through in life. We pray, Heavenly Father, for uh, Harry. Uh, we pray also for Alicia. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you bless them in their situations. We pray, Heavenly Father, for Laverne and Bert traveling. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you keep your loving arms and protection around them as he, as he travels. Others, Heavenly Father, that are out today, that are, are traveling that during this week. Uh, we pray, Heavenly Father, for the Stokes family and for Sister Hall and Brother McKinney family. We pray for the Baptist family and also Brother Sister Team at this time. We ask you to continue uh, that you bless them with, uh, with, with, with grace. We pray, Heavenly Father, for others that we know uh, within uh, our number here and, and those that we don't necessarily know. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you touch us and bless us all. We pray, Heavenly Father, for healing in the nation and in the world. And we pray, Heavenly Father, for conflict resolution. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you just reach out and touch like many of we all know that you can. Bless us, Heavenly Father. If we're bereaved, give us comfort. If we're sick, bless us to our reasonable portion of health and strength. If we're struggling through things in life, bless us and keep your loving arms around us. Those that are traveling, bless them. The traveling grace. But we pray, Heavenly Father, in Jesus Christ's name, that these blessings and many more. Amen. God's day is done.
lesson loves to open our eyes, see another day, to come out, sit in these pews, dear God, worship you, think about the things that you've done for us, the things that you mean to us, dear God, thanking you for your darling son, Jesus Christ who came down to this cruel world, preached to us, and then when it was time, gave his life for us. We ask dear God that each and every one of us look back at that and we think about it that when we take this supper, what it really means to each and every one of us. Oh God Almighty, we ask that you bless this bread. Represent Jesus' body. That you bless the cup, which represents his shedded blood, dear God. We thank you, dear God, for everything that you do to us and everything that you mean to us. We ask that we take this with a clean hand and pure heart, always looking back to the cross for our salvation. These are the best of the ask your God, Son, Jesus Christ, now. today at the point of giving. Let's not give
extend and enhance uh, the borders of your kingdom in this white Haven community as we seek to serve it, not only in this community, but in the city of Memphis and all over the world, is our prayer. So in my name is Jesus, we pray and give thanks always. Let us together say. Trust you been encouraged uh, from the word of God on this morning and that it has truly blessed your life as a result of you being here. So all of our guests, uh, it has been truly a delight to have had you and I missed and we trust that you have been blessed as a result of your being here. Many other places you could have gone but you chose to be with the boulevard uh, and uh, we don't take that for granted because after all, the boulevard is a place of belonging. It leads to a place of blessing. Amen. 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 Somebody knows who visited with us virtually. We're glad to have you as well. If there are those in person uh, visiting with us, you'd like to stand and let us know who you are and where you're from. We can give you that opportunity. To my right, you visit. And to my left. Again, to all our visitors, uh, particularly those who are worshiping virtually. Thank you for uh, worshiping with the Boulevard. Please, please visit with us uh, again. A uh, word of appreciation uh, to Brother Carl Davis did an outstanding job uh, on last Sunday. Amen. Yeah. Our, our the word uh, of God, and uh, we appreciate uh, Brother Carlton and Brother Ford for uh, the ability that God has, has given them to stand in this place from time to time and claim the unsearchable riches of Christ. And we're just thankful for uh, what God has blessed us with uh, here on the boulevard. And, and uh, when y'all get bored with me, maybe you got some freshness from me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we thank God for them and uh, we appreciate uh, 
damn near in a powerful, powerful way. Uh, a couple of announcements. Uh, our leadership meeting, monthly meetings are coming up. Leadership meeting uh, this Tuesday at 4.30 p.m. via Zoom. Typically, we would have the business meeting the second Saturday, uh, but because of NTW taking place this weekend, uh, if it's a hybrid event, meaning that it's virtual and in person, um, many of my brothers will be involved uh, with uh, NTW uh, because many of them are teachers, so we're, we're moving the monthly business meeting to next Monday, not tomorrow. The monthly business meeting for all of our brothers, ages 21 and over, will be moved to next Monday, April the 11th, at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom. Not tomorrow. Next Monday, April the 11th, 6.30 p.m. via Zoom is our monthly business meeting. We, we look for all of you to be a part of that meeting. And then as mentioned, uh, NTW this weekend, uh, myself and Sister G will be traveling early Thursday morning. Uh, we'll be flying out. I believe uh, Brother Kincaid also will be uh, attending in person. Uh, and there will be some other congregation, I believe, from the city uh, will be attending in person. Most people will be attending virtually, uh, but uh, being a facilitator, we have to be on site. So uh, pray for us for safe uh, passing, safe uh, journey to and from. Uh, we'll get back here uh, late Saturday night, so be in prayer uh, for the workshop and for our travel uh, that all will go well this weekend. If I can leave it, God can achieve it. Right. So help me to show it. So the love is going to In the midst of this pandemic, don't panic. We ain't out of the woods yet. But in the midst of prayer, find power and peace. We're going to make it after a while. Keep trusting God. Give God some praise and prayer stand. If you miss me from singing down here, you can't find me nowhere, nowhere. Come on up to bright glory. I'll be singing up there. I'll be singing up there, up there. I'll be singing up there, up there. Just come on up to bright glory. I'll be singing up there. If you miss me from serving down here, you can't find me nowhere, nowhere. Right glory, I'll be serving up there. I'll be serving up there, up there. I'll be serving up there, up there. Just come on up to the right glory. I'll be serving up there. Let us pray. Father God, we come once again to Father just to say thank you. We thank you for this day that you bless us with, dear Father. Thank you for this opportunity you've given us once again to come out and worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for your free sermon on this day, dear Father. We thank you for the message that you inspired upon our hearts, dear Father. And dear Father, we pray that we'll take it in our everyday lives with us, dear Father. Father, we pray for all of those that ask a special prayer request, especially all of those that are bereaved, as well as those that are passing, dear Father. And we ask you to be with us, dear Father. We will be there for those that are bereaved. Even those that are coming up, be reminded of those that have passed, dear Father. Dear Father, we thank you for each and every one that is here, dear Father, for showing their concern, dear Father, that they want to balance that kingdom, dear Father, as we grow. And dear Father, we pray and we ask for forgiveness of sin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. On this morning, on this morning, you're going to have Brother Baptist, and things going to change this morning. Sister Smith, I ain't going to let you all go.